Hey guys, it's Izzy here and today we're going to be doing an annual video, a video we do every year, and that is my record collection. <laughs> need another crate for my records and that's why we're filming in here because there's so many and I don't want to carry them to a whole different room so they're kind of getting stacked on top and everything now so I need to find out where my dad got this crate from so I can get one same or my OC OCD will like freak out so the first two records are actually from the same person and they got me one one for Christmas 2019 and one for 2018. The first one being the Struts, Young and Dangerous. The song, um, like the main single from this, Body Talks, is stuck in my head right now. I posted a reel on my Instagram if you guys want to check that out. And then um, she got me this one that I haven't listened to yet because I have to get in the right mood to listen to it. But that is Game of Thrones um, Season 2, music by Raman Dejawadi. I don't know how to say his last name, but absolutely amazing poser. And it has Cersei on the back, who's my queen. I love Cersei. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this has actually two discs in it, two records, two vinyls, I don't know. Um, so then let's keep the theme of um, soundtracks going. Um, with this first one. We have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is a Quentin Tarantino movie. Um, this one is really cool because it does it like in a radio format. There's ads on here and everything from the 1960s and that's just really cool. I got this one for um, Christmas this year as well. So then here's one I got for Christmas a long time ago. I get a vinyl every year for Christmas, sometimes multiple. But this is Led Zeppelin IV, such an iconic record probably one of the greatest of all time. It's not in my top like five, top ten personally, but I think Stairway to Heaven is one of the greatest songs of all time, if not the greatest. So then we have um, Electric Ladyland, the Jimi Hendrix experience. You can never go wrong with Jimi, the greatest guitar player of all time. There's our inside. This one isn't vintage. None of these have been um, vintage yet. Um, I got this one at a record store in Durham. I think it was in Durham. So then we have, I've, I have some of these plastic sleeves um, and I'm trying to put them on all of my records. Usually on these that are just like one vinyl because those aren't as like fat or how this one opened, how the other one, how they open up. That just makes it fat. So we have Some Girls by the Rolling Stones, another great album. The Rolling Stones, one of the greatest bands of all time once again. So then we have one of my favorite albums. I got this at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio, and that is A Night at the Opera. This comes to us from Queen. So this is actually only one disc, but it still opens up. So that's what I was saying. Some of them are only one disc, but still open up. I don't know if this was a thing more common in the past or what. I mean, it may have not even been like that when this album was first released, I think in 1975. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Um, because as I said, this one is not vintage, but it's one of my favorite albums. Like it's in top two. Here's a vintage one. This is a Dawkin <laughs> under lock and key. This one does have some iconic songs on it if you are into hair metal so talking cool <laughs> and I, I really like that album cover like with the flames and all this is my most expensive record in my collection and this is metallica um i don't know if this is a bootleg or what but i wanted it because it is live at um metallica coliseum charlotte's what it says but it's um at the time the charlotte coliseum it's not called that anymore but on February 26, 89. And then we have Live at Le Amour, I don't know how to say that, in Brooklyn, New York on April 9th, 1983, Dave Mustaine's last show with the band. So both of those are kind of significant to me being I'm um, from like the Charlotte area, kind of. <laughs> it's Michael, it's this big city. And then um, Dave Mustaine's last show, I think is a significant moment in rock and roll history. So then we had the soundtrack for my favorite movie. Um, at the time I got this, did I realize that this was my favorite movie? Probably not. Um, 
but it became one of my favorite movies and that is 1917. The music is composed by Thomas Newman. The movie is written by Sam Mendes and Kirsty Carnes Wilson. The last names may be reversed but I think this should have won um, best um, score, soundtrack, whatever the Oscars called but the Joker won. I have not listened to the Joker soundtrack so I can't tell you but I do think this should have won. It is it's amazing. <laughs> so then another soundtrack we have here is Stranger Things and this is for seasons one and two on this version. So since it is covering multiple seasons it is a multi-disc um, vinyl. Whoa like ASMR. I'm thinking of doing an ASMR video with my vinyls. I will leave a link in the pinned comment to my ASMR channel if you guys would like to check it out and tell me in the comments if you guys would like to see a video like that. So then we have Lady Gaga Born This Way. I got this for my birthday last year and still haven't listened. My bad. Um, so this is made in the Czech Republic right up there. That's unique. You don't see that. But Lady Gaga. I want some of her other albums but they're just kind of expensive. Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't pay for that one myself. This might be my cheapest record and that's Bon Jovi 7800. Um, Fahrenheit, this was um, one of the band's first albums that did not sell well when it first came out. But my favorite song by Bon Jovi is on this album and that's In and Out of Love. It's the first song on the album. See, this is very skinny, very small. We love that, like I Love Richie Sambora. <laughs> Posters right up there, watch me. Then I have a Bon Jovi poster right there. And then I have a poster for this album right over there. And that's Girls, Girls, Girls by Motley Crue. Um, I love Motley Crue's music. I'm not a fan of them personally, like the guys in the band. Mainly Tommy Lee. Um, if you know me, then you probably know that rant of how I hate Tommy Lee. Nikki is like, I like Nikki, but I do think he is kind of questionable as well. He's like chaotic good or whatever. Um, and then Vince and Mick don't really bother me that much because I think they both kind of clean themselves up. Um, but yeah. Then we have Pierre Savelle because I was in emo mood one day and I bought this and this is a limited edition 500 on aqua blue and bone A and B side vinyl. So this is, um, this is one of my favorite albums in high school, um, Collide with the Sky. Um, what is my favorite song on here? Probably, because there's so many of their like iconic songs so I'm going to say one that um, it's an iconic. That's one of my favorites and that's 100 Sleepless Nights. Um, let's see what do we have next? Another emo one and that's All Time Low. Don't panic. It's longer now. Um, yeah, All Time Low. I'm sure y'all all have heard of them. Again, so many good songs. Um, my favorite is probably um, Backseat Serenade. Um, if these shoes for the states, I like that one too. Or worse states, not these states. It's yeah, it's hard for me to choose. And then this is one of my all-time favorite albums, and that is Metallica Kill 'Em All. And yeah, <laughs> um, the Four Horsemen is my favorite song on this album, which we seem to be living um, in the present <laughs> apocalypse. Cool. So this one I got in Phoenix. It is pretty um, beat up if you can't tell but this is rock and roll over. I never know which way to hold it. This is the way to hold it. From Kiss. As I said I got this in Phoenix and yeah um, <laughs> I didn't go in um, intentionally going to buy a Kiss album. I was really looking for like Fleetwood Mac but um, or Stevie Nicks, but I ended up buying a Kiss album because it's Kiss and I love them again. There's an Ace for, two Ace Freely posters up there. I have a Kiss um, poster that I got at the concert, but I just haven't put it up yet and it's going to be kind of funny now, um, in a bad way I guess. Um, now all the shows on that um, poster, um, not all of them happened. I was lucky and saw them like a month before lockdown happened, so I got lucky. <laughs> And then we have another one I got in Phoenix and it needs to be in the sleeve but it's not and that is Fairly's comment. This is Ace Fairly's one of its bands away from Kiss and um, I was really shocked to see this so I absolutely had to buy it when I saw it at the record room in Phoenix. I think I, I'm pretty sure it's in Phoenix so you'll know, but it may be like in Glendo or somewhere I don't know it's in the Phoenix area. <laughs> recommend checking them out. The guy was really cool gave me a discount and everything so shout out to him. So then we have another one I got there that is a Blue Oyster Cult and I don't know the name. Some Enchanted Evening. I really like this cover and then Blue Oyster Cult is 
one of they they did my all time favorite song and that's Don't Fear the Reaper and that is on this album and we'll see another album from them in a little bit. So then another Phoenix album. See, I have all these sleeves because literally the girl at um, Zia Records, which is also in Phoenix, I went to their Phoenix location there, all through the Southwest. Um, she was like, here, take all these. And I was like, okay, cool. And so um, we have Fleetwood Mac Rumors. Um, yeah, so I wanted a Fleetwood Mac one because Stevie Nicks is from Phoenix originally. So um, I was trying to get bands that have some connection to Phoenix. So that's how I got that one. And again, iconic album. Then we have Megadeth, which also has a connection to Phoenix. Megadeth later moved to the Phoenix area in about the mid 90s and recorded some of their later albums there. And David Ellison, who is right there at the bass player, he lives in Scottsdale, Arizona, which if you don't know is in the Phoenix area. So this is my, my favorite 80s Megadeth album. Um, the cover is really cool. That's the UN in the background. You can look up the story. Um, Dave Mustaine has probably told it a hundred times, but cool album. So another Phoenix native is Alice Cooper. So this is the Trash album with one of my favorite songs on it, which is Poison. That's one of my all-time favorite songs. So I had to pick it up and actually there, another girl was um, getting an Alice Cooper records and I got to talk to her a little bit just about his music and all that. And obviously I love getting to talk about music with other music lovers and all that. So it was really cool to talk to her. Um, and that was, I got at Zio Records in Phoenix as well. So then we have Metallica and Justice For All, another um, cool album. The bass on this album isn't great because this is the one that came out after Cliff Burden died. So Lars like turned down the bass on the album. Um, yeah, <laughs> I watched too many Metallica documentaries. But good album, and there's a Funko Pop of Lady Justice if you guys would want to buy that. I think it's on Amazon. So this is like a EP. This is Metallica, the um, 598 EP, Garage Days Re. This so rap invasion of your privacy. It's falling out. So then we have another hair album, and that is White Snake, and um, they have a lot of iconic songs. Let me see. So the night, and here I go again, which I would consider their best songs that are you know mainstream so obviously a staple for hair metal then we have scorpions who are one of my favorite <laughs> they are a german band so there's rocky like a hurricane which is probably their most well-known song big city nights which is one of my favorites on this album still loving you um yeah so i really really like the scorpions recommend checking them out so then we have Quiet Riot Mental Health. I've been seeing this album a lot lately. I don't know why, but um, yeah, I've just been seeing it around. And yeah, um, Quiet Riot, another essential hair metal rock band from the 80s. Then we have my all-time favorite record, and that's Appetite for Destruction from Guns N' Roses. There's Izzy Stradlin, who I love. It was also his birthday um, last week, so... Yeah, Guns N' Roses is my favorite band, um, favorite album, and all of that. Then we have King Cobra, another really cool album cover with the like snake skin. This obviously goes with the band's name. So then we have another Quiet Riot record. Um, let's see what songs on here. What y'all know? Yeah, you probably know a lot of these. Um, yeah, because I feel like they were really. Um, inspirational to a lot of the other bands that came out later in the 80s so that's only good so then we have i can never pronounce his name right yangwe momstein who is european i don't remember exactly which country i'm gonna say german though um very much very guitar driven and again an inspiration to a lot of other bands another one of his right here really like kind of power metal cover with the dragons and all of that very fantastical looking. So then we have, oh, I picked up two. We have Loudness, Lightning Strikes. This looks like a Japanese band. Um, I, I want to know more about them because that's something unique. I don't really listen to a lot of Asian music. Um, so if you have any Asian rock band suggestions, I know one okay rock because I did see them in concert, but um, let me know. So we have Tony. Ma Mako Pine Maximum Security. That guitar is so 
Cool. Um, let's see another mom's fan. He looks cool. Just the guy looks cool. He reminds me of um this guy in a band. I don't know if I should say his name on here. Um, who is a band that I've played. That I've talked to the guy that's like, um, yeah, <laughs> Deep Purple. Um, y'all probably all heard of Deep Purple. You would think the album would be purple instead of blue. <laughs> Um, we have Dolphin again. I really love the coloring of this album and I'm seeing um, if there's any of their um, I can't, Dream Warriors. Yeah, Dream Warriors. Y'all all know that. Hopefully if you don't, what are you doing? <laughs> then we have Racer X with Paul Gilbert, Street Lethal. That's like a city skyline and I like anything that has city skylines. It kind of looks like Chicago, but I don't know if it's supposed to be like an actual city that we know. So we have Sammy Hagar who again, if y'all don't know, what are you doing with your lives? Yeah, I really like that cover because we know I love red and like lips look cool. I don't know what the girl's biting into. A good pick me. Um, this is another cool cover, cover Alcatraz. And cool cover. Styx, again, a band that I am sure y'all know. So look, this is a vintage one that opens up. That, uh, I just did. Okay, there. See, it opens up. And then, I've never seen that. That's interesting. So Styx. Then we have Dawkin. Dawkin. I always think they look cool. Like that guy. I think it's the one one of my friends likes. I like his hair. <laughs> And then we have Vinnie Vincent in Evasion. Vinnie Vincent's a very interesting character. People have strong opinions about the guy. <laughs> and yeah, and actually um, Mark Slaughter is the singer on this album. So um, yeah. So let's go back to a non-vintage just briefly. We have Harry Styles' Fine Line. This is a very heavy record by feeling. I think we got through most of the majority of my heavy metal records. But yes, this was a very popular album. It came out in 2019. I think that's probably the last record. No, it's the last one I got before I went to Phoenix, but not the last before like the world ended. <laughs> so let's have one vintage. So we had GNR Lies. Um, this one is, yeah, pretty beat up. I got it on eBay from a seller in Sacramento, I think. But I won't have all the Guns N' Roses albums. I only need like two more. So Appetite for Destruction, this is my original copy and I was lucky that um, somebody gave me the um, original pressing because this one skips a lot. I don't know if it's scratched. It's been doing it since I got this album a few years ago. So I was very thankful that she gave me that one. So then we have Queen's Greatest Hits. This is the picture I only saw as a kid of Queen because this came out in, I don't know what year. It only has like the 2011 um, pressing of it. So I know it, it came out before that. But this is only, that's the picture I think of when I think Queen, Roger. <laughs> so this is a vintage Queen record right here. I'm gonna pick a few at a time. And that is the game. So the one on this one that y'all will know is another one bites the dust and then creates a little thing called love. Um, yeah, so y'all will know those songs, 80s Queen. Then we have my all time favorite, Mr. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Um, this is, as you can tell, very vintage. This is the Italian pressing of the album. Um, the songs are in English, obviously, and everything written on it is in English, but it is the Italian pressing. Then we have Van Halen, too. This was expensive. Like, this okay, one... so I had to switch cameras, actually, because the card ran out of storage, and once you use a card on that kind of camera, you can't use it on a different camera. I don't know. So, let's get... <laughs> We're not going to get a big handful. So we have Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Damn the Torpedoes. My state gets mentioned on this album. So that's cool because my state's a two-name state. So it doesn't really get mentioned that often. So then we have Leonard Skinner, the like pronounced album. We're in like our southern rock for these past three albums. Not th three, I, I don't know because I'm filming forever in them. Really boring y'all to death, but we have Bruce Springsteen, Darkness on the Edge of Town. I'm being chaotic right now. 
We have Lana Del Rey, Lust for Life. I like never listened to this Lana album. Her earlier albums are better. I didn't even buy the Kim Charles one or whatever it's called. But she's beautiful. The album is beautiful. So that's cool. And then we have the Ramones live at the Roxy, August 12th, 1976. I'm not a big punk person, but um, this one was bought for me. Um, so we have Katy Perry. This is actually my first one, and it's embarrassing because it's not a great album, but Prism. And then we have the second album, which is Lana Del Rey, Born to Die, which is a great album. Um, there's so many songs that I like on here, but y'all probably know these self. Um, no, the one y'all will know is Summertime. Sadness. Kiss me right before you go. <laughs> no, then we have Lord, Pure Heroine. Um, Tennis Court is my favorite on here, but Royals would be the main song. Another great album right here, Lana Del Rey, Paradise, Ride American Cola, Body Electric, On Your Side A. Like, whoa, Lana. You were just bam, 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 good songs. This one, I got to get um, tickets to sound check for this band's concert. I don't recommend because you can't leave the arena and all, not a lot of things are open. And for somebody who has like anxiety before going to events, it wasn't good for me. Um, so this is sounds good, feels good from five stars, but um, do it once in your life, I guess. I don't know. I don't think it's a necessary thing that you have to do. Um, then we have 6 a.m. and this is Prayers for the Blessed. When I was first getting into Motley Crue, this was like 6 a.m. was a thing, so I bought it because Nikki was my favorite member. Then we have ACDC back in black. I feel like I look like Angus wearing this little coat thing. <laughs> yeah, so back in black, Hell's Bells, um, um, You Shook Me All Night Long. Those are all songs that y'all know. Here's another one of my favorite albums. This is John Cougar Mellencamp Scarecrow. Um, this is vintage from like 1985. Um, my favorite on here, oh, I don't even know, I like all of them. But the one that you guys would know is Small Town. I think that is the, um, I know what, no, and then the R-O-Z-K in the USA. That was in Stranger Things too, actually. We had the Rod Stewart's album. He did a version of the, um, Outlander theme song to sing me a song. Let's see if I can pick one. I can. We have Ace Fairly Bronx Boy, and this is a marble kind of thing. Oh my gosh, it has hair all on it. Um, Bronx Boy um, is my favorite. We have Hollywood Rose. This was Guns N' Roses before Guns N' Roses. This is had Izzy and Axel. We have Stranger Things 3, the weakest Stranger Things season, but the soundtrack, the soundtrack for this album wasn't great. Billy was probably your main um, antagonist and he is a metal head, but they have like no metal. So like Duffer Brothers, whoever chooses the music, do better. Then our last one is Fairly's Comet Live and all these records just fell on me. Um, yeah, Ace Freely, love the guy, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, comment, write, and subscribe. I know it was very long, but there's a lot of records, um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week. Bye!